Hello, young grasshoppers. This is mainly about the grasshopper war, but I do tell you a whole bunch of facts, too many facts, about grasshoppers. So what is the grasshopper war? It's a story that I heard about the Shawnee and the Lenape, the Delaware people, but I've also heard it coming from the Sioux and some other places. But ultimately, it's these two boys. They find a dead grasshopper, and they start fighting over it, saying, no, I found it first. Well, you found it on my land. And then one thing led to the next. Then everybody's fighting. So the boys start fighting. The other kids start fighting. The moms and mothers start fighting. And then the hunters and the warriors come in, and they start fighting. And they fought this war forever. The Shawnee and the Lenape used to be one tribe. And after the grasshopper war, they were no longer together. So... Over a fucking grasshopper. A war fought over a grasshopper. Grasshoppers do bite. They can bite you. But they're not known for biting, even though they may bite a predator for defense. Grasshoppers have strong jaws for tearing vegetation, but they actually prefer jumping away from danger instead of confronting the predators. Locusts are the same thing as grasshoppers. Locusts are a species of short-horned grasshoppers, just like the plague fictional Moses put on Pharaoh. Oh, my God, it's locusts, right? Everybody be on alert. The grasshoppers are coming, and locusts and grasshoppers, they're one and the same. There are some species we've dubbed grasshoppers, others we call locusts, but essentially we're talking about short-horned members of the order Orthoptera. These jumping herbivores are with shorter antenna are grouped in the suborder Califera while their longer horned brethren are all a bunch of Orthopteras. Some of them are Califeras, others are Encephera. That's the crickets and the katydids and the locusts. They're all related. The largest recorded locust swarm was one formed by the now extinct Rocky Mountain locust in 1875. 1875, one year before Colorado became a state, the swarm was 2,900 kilometers, 1,800 miles long, 180 kilometers, 110 miles wide, and one estimate puts the number of locusts involving a, involved at 3.5 trillion locusts, grasshoppers, in the Rocky Mountains, 1875, just right up, right up town. Each species produces a characteristic rhythm that distinguishes its song from others and enables courts, males. <laughs> Duterte, the Philippines leader, said he killed a guy just for looking at him wrong when he was 16 years old. Duterte is a killer. He's a killer. You're a gangster. There was a 15-year-old that killed a 22-year-old in Pueblo a month ago. Does that mean that 15-year-old is going to become president or governor one day? So it's very extremely easy to go to war. Duterte just said because the guy looked at him wrong. He was giving him the stink eye. People stepping on sneakers. People are ready to fucking fight. And it makes me think about the colonists in Africa. The white oppressors, nobody would challenge. <laughs> nobody would stand up to the white oppressors. But as soon as the black man looked at one another with the bad eye, with the stink eye, with any kind of you know, insult or any kind of slight whatsoever, the slightest slight. They're ready to go to war. They're ready to fight to, you know, for their dignity and for their soul and for their... Grasshoppers, Katie Dids, and Locusts are all related to each other. They play a characteristic rhythm that distinguishes this song from the others. So when males are trying to court the females so they can get some ass, right, because that's the whole point of, uh, not crickets, grasshoppers singing, the species have their own unique song. A single grasshopper can eat half of its body weight in plants per day. In the fictional Bible, John the Baptist ate locusts and wild honey while living in the wilderness. Grasshoppers have ears on their bellies. Grasshoppers, when they appear in dreams, they've been interpreted as symbols of freedom, independence, spiritual enlightenment, the inability to settle down or commit to a decision. In Japan, grasshoppers are seen as a sign of good luck. In the 1998 Pixar film, A Bug's Life, the heroes are the member of an ant colony. The lead village city in Pennsylvania, it's uh, Peco, Quellin, Pesho, Pesho Kalin. So Pesho Kalin is the Algonquin village 
where the Lenape and the Shawnee people had lived together, located on the peninsula north of where Gallows Run empties into the Delaware River, not far from Kintersville, Pennsylvania. The Shawnees under the chief Kakawachi had moved there in 1698. The town was mostly in Durham Township, but spread into adjoining Nakamixon. It was opposite Peco Quailin with the that the Lenape and Shawnees fought the Great Battle, the Grasshopper War, in 1730. 1730 is when the Great Grasshopper War happened. How? It's so easy to go to war. We're in 30 shadow wars right now. 30 Vietnams in Africa. Hoppers make their music by stridulating or crepitating. Stridulating or crepitating. Most grasshoppers stridulate, which simply means they rub their hind leg against their fore wing. Special pegs on the inside of the hind leg act like a percussion instrument of sorts. When they come into contact with the thickened edge of the wing, the band winged grasshoppers crepitate or snap their wings loudly as they fly. If humans could jump the way grasshoppers do, we could easily leap, easily jump, leap the length of a football field or more. They jump with those big back miniature catapulting legs. They also cause billions of dollars in damage to food crops annually because they eat half of its body weight in plants per day. In the U.S. alone, grasshoppers cause $1.5 billion in damage to grazing lands each year. Grass you have little Billy the grasshopper. Little Billy the grasshopper is just hopping around, enjoying life, eating plants, right, singing songs, crepitating, and uh, just, you know, just doing a grasshopper's life, right, just kind of chilling out. Then all of a sudden, he, you know, old age caused him to die peacefully, and he laid his head down on the wrong plot of ground, evidently. Two boys were playing together a Lenape and a Shawnee, eventually they're going to separate. So these two boys are going to be the origins of the Shawnee and the Lenape. Ugh, excuse me, the Delaware, the Lenape, Lenape. And, you know, they play with their little friend. A group of children came upon them. He showed the grasshopper to the friends. They're like, hey, you know, look at the discovery. But they're like, wait a second, that grasshopper is mine. And, of course, you know, this is Mark and... Uh, Larry, Mark and Larry were fighting, so they were the origin. 1730, actually, the grasshopper war is so easy to explain. I would like to know casualties and how long the thing lasts, but that's what separated their one tribe. How easy it is it? You know, people could get into a fight over a slight, or you could just make up shit to fight over, over a fucking dead grasshopper. Meanwhile, you got, you know, uh, trillions of grasshoppers in the fucking Rocky Mountain, and they're terrorizing people. Locusts are destroying crops. And yet, we're going to fight an entire war over the possession of a dead grasshopper. So, that's the shortest story, actually, in the world. Uh, I'm sure there's more details to the grasshopper war between the Shawnee and the Lenape. But I'm just going to go on with all the facts. Okay, so 1998 Pixar film, A Bug's Life. Guess who the villain is? It's a grasshopper. And guess who voices that grasshopper? That would be Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. In 1954, there was a desert locust swarm in Kenya that consumed over 200 square kilometers of wild and cultivated plants. Grasshoppers are an important source of protein, so I guess you could have seen it as an opportunity to try to catch them all and start eating. A small cuticle in a grasshopper's knee acts as a spring and lets it catapult its body into the air. A small cuticle is responsible for that. On the abdomen of a grasshopper, each side of the first abdominal segment tucked under the wings, you'll find membranes that vibrate in response to sound waves. This simple eardrum, called a tympana, allows the grasshopper to hear the songs of its fellow grasshoppers. Although grasshoppers can hear, they can't distinguish pitch very well. Grasshoppers jump by catapulting themselves into the air, and grasshoppers can fly. They can catapult themselves and they can soar through the toppers are an important source of protein for many human societies in areas of Africa, Asia, the South America, and Central America. Locusts, grasshoppers, kitty dids are a regular ingredient in the local diet. It's a delicacy. Grasshoppers are packed with protein, so they're an important nutritional staple in many cultures. Grasshoppers have existed 
long before the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs ruled the earth for 165 million years. The fossil record shows that primitive grasshoppers first appeared during the Car Carboniferous period, more than 300 to 400 million years ago. Sometimes grasshoppers spit at their predators. Some people used to say that they spit tobacco juice because they were associated with tobacco crops in the past, but it's not tobacco juice. It's just like, you know, a grasshoppers, but velociraptors, at least in that movie, Jurassic Park, they spit. Camel spit, too, in that movie Aladdin. That's what I learned. Grasshoppers are symbols of luck in Japan. There's over 11,000 species of grasshoppers worldwide. They're found all over the place. Forests, rainforests, meadows, ponds, streams, rocky areas, even deserts. Grasshoppers can be green, brown, grayish, or ochre. Ochre in color to camouflage in the environment. They also sometimes are really brightly colored to make it look like they're poisonous. Grasshoppers have a pair of antennae on their head. They serve as a sensory organ which detects various stimuli from the environment. Some say taste and uh, touch or smell and touch. Most species of grasshoppers have wings and they can fly. The legs of a grasshopper are like springs. And so they get into position, and then they could shoot off into the sky. And so they're great jumpers that catapult themselves, but they also got wings. And they can fly, and they can fly for like several days, in fact. So they can reach a speed of 13 kilometers per hour, 8 miles per hour when they're flying. You know, they're, fly they're great flyers, they're great jumpers. They can jump as far because their hind legs, like I said, are miniature catapults. They bend its legs at the knee. Mechanism within the knee works like a spring, storing up the energy. And then when it's ready to jump, it relaxes the leg muscles, allowing the spring to release, flinging it into the air. That's what their long hind legs are designed for. They have a string-like structure located in the knee that acts like a catapult, which sends grasshoppers 10 inches high into the air. And they're only t 2 inches themselves, 2 inches. Acceleration during takeoff approaches 20 Gs. Is that G forces, gravitational forces, 20 Gs. When a flying fighter jet, you can experience G forces up to 9 Gs. So a fighter jet, you can get 9 Gs, whatever Gs is. But 20 Gs for a grasshopper. They could jump about 25 centimeters high, one meter long. If humans could jump as far as grasshoppers do, proportional to size, we could leap more than the length of a football field. Grasshoppers could travel a distance that's 200 times longer than their own body in a single jump. And then they got wings, right? So they can jump and then they can fly like a little insect eagle just soaring all over the place, flying over on top of everybody. They occasionally gather in larger groups that migrate together for better sources of food, but most of the time they're isolated and by themselves. Hoppers, these little tiny eagle insects which can jump real far and fly all over the place and then sing beautiful songs, a tiny singing eagle insect. During their migration, grasshoppers can remain in the air without landing for three days. They can fly for three days straight. Front legs of a grasshopper are much shorter, shorter than their hind legs. Their front legs are for walking and feeding. Grasshoppers are active during the day. They're diurnal animals. They need to increase their body temperature with the help of the sun before they become ready to start a day. And then they take rest at night. The diet of grasshoppers is based on various plants. They prefer different types of grass and flowering plants. they got a big appetite. Daily intake of food overcomes grasshoppers' body weight more than two times. They eat two times their body weight, or at least half of it. Wait, half of it, two times? I don't know. They eat a lot. They're fat. These grass, 7,000 known species of grasshoppers are in grassy meadow all over the place, right? They cause $1.5 billion in damage in just the United States to grazing lands. The main predators of grasshoppers are monkeys, birds, lizards, snakes, rodents, and large insects. So snakes, rodents, these are our predators, right? They, they come in and steal our babies out of our... Grasshoppers have two antennae. Six legs, two pair of wings, and little small pinchers to tear off food, such as grasses, leaves, and cereal crops. 
Some species of grasshopper species make noises by either rubbing their back legs against the fore wings or body or by snapping their wings when flying. And I've heard that when they snap their wings, it sounds like a, a pop, like a static electricity pop. Grasshoppers grow to about two inches, five centimeters. Some grow as five inches, as big as five. Hoppers have a large pair of compound eyes. They actually got five eyes. Grasshoppers have five eyes. They got two big eyes, which they could give them all around vision. But then they got three simple eyes, which they say could detect light and dark. And then the antenna, which is touch and smell. Light and dark, but then some people actually don't even know what the three eyes are for. So grasshoppers have five eyes. They're colored to camouflage them in their local habitat or to make it look like they're poisonous. In climates where winter is cold, grasshoppers can only survive the winter as an egg. Grasshoppers mate in the late summer or fall. After they're done fucking, the female will lay up to 100 of egg pods in the ground. The eggs remain in the ground over winter, and then they hatch in late May. In late May. So the only way that grasshoppers can survive in Colorado is by laying their eggs and their eggs. Grasshoppers' eardrum on the abdomen can detect rhythm and intensity but not hear the pitch of a sound. Grasshoppers are older than dinosaurs, dating back to the early Jurassic around 250 to 350 million years ago. Grasshoppers are eaten in Africa, Asia, and Central South American countries. It's a good source of protein. And Native America, the Ohlone people burn grassland to herd the grasshoppers into pits where they can be collected as food. That's the Muwekma Ohlone tribe. That's essentially the San Francisco Bay region, the natives that lived in the San Francisco Bay region. It's got five eyes. There's two large eyes, thousands of lenses. They can see in all directions, but they also got three mysterious smaller eyes. And their herbivores, their favorite foods in, are corn, wheat, barley, and alfalfa. And that's it. Corn, wheat, barley, and alfalfa.